Have you always dreamed about opening your own juice franchise? In today's video, we're going to go through the juice industry as a whole, as well as a few different juice franchises that you might want to consider if you have your eyes set on opening up a juice franchise or a similar concept in the food and beverage segment. So it can be a bit overwhelming. There's so many smoothie juice franchises that have been around for years, like Smoothie King, Red Mango, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, there's up and coming brands. So there's a lot of opportunities in the juice and smoothie segment. So it's important to understand how this industry is, as well as understand the, the general numbers for a juice and smoothie franchise. Brand reputation, super important for this industry. Generally, they're catering to a kind of healthy crowd that those consumers that are really seeking product that's largely marketed as a healthy product for those that are fit, active lifestyle. Brand recognition is really big to get the customers in the door, as well as to build that loyal client base. Product quality is also a huge factor. So think about chains like Chipotle, where they had a major foodborne illness across many of their locations, and that killed their stock, and it really hurt the customer perception of that brand. So the product development, product control, how they source the products, very important, and something that you should be asking franchisors, as well as the select franchisees that you do decide to talk to about how the, the product is and how they maintain quality control for that product. You're really only as good as your weakest link. So if you have franchisees and a juice franchise system that you recently entered that are cutting corners and doing bad stuff with their product or going around the franchisor and working with vendors that aren't authorized, you could pay a big price if there's some major uh, episode and some negative PR pace. The consumer is not going to think, oh, it's just isolated to that one franchisee operating in Southern California. They're going to assume that the whole system has an issue and that's going to negatively affect you as a franchisee. So it's important to understand, are all the juice franchisees on board? Are they maintaining that brand equity as well as are they uh, on board with maintaining uh, the, the product control and, and really not cutting corners? So one juice option to consider is Jamba Juice. As of 2021, they had over 700 locations, 762 locations that were owned by franchisees and another five corporately owned and managed locations. Now for Jamba Juice, it's going to set you back for the franchise fee of $35,000. Also with the build out, rent and all the other expenses, you could expect to invest two hundred. 50k up to 550k for your Jamba Juice. The failure rate for Jamba Juice over the past three years is 5%, which is less than the industry mean as well as for all franchises. In terms of system-wide sales, they have averaging a volume of about $750,000. And then the median, so there's some really top performers, the median's a little lower, right around $700,000. So if you're making $700,000 from your Jamba Juice and say you're, you're making a 15% profit margin, you could expect as an owner to be making about $100,000 per year. If you invested 250 k for your Jamba Juice and you got that business open up pretty fast, that's not a bad deal. So depending how much you invested, how, how the business is doing, we could expect a payback period for a Jamba Juice at a pretty wide range, anywhere from three to seven years. Again, depending on a lot of factors, how much you originally invested, time you're dedicating to the business, and just how the business is, is performing based on your management team. Another concept in, in, in the juice space or parallel industry, I should say, is Kung Fu Tea. Kung Fu Tea, the franchise fee starts at about $25,000. And to open up a Kung Fu Tea, it's going to set you back anywhere from $160K to $375,000. They've grown pretty rapidly in the United States. At the end of 2021, they had about 250 Kung Fu Tea locations across the United States, many operating in, in malls and strip centers across the US. People aren't leaving Kung Fu Tea, very low franchise for sale rate at 3% over the past few years. And then also on the failure rate side, 0% failure rate over the last recorded year. Kung Fu Tea, we, we don't have most recent uh, financials. Definitely talk to, to franchisees to understand how they're performing and if they would invest in a Kung Fu Tea again. Another concept to, to consider is Tapioca Express. The franchise fee is pretty low at $15,000 anywhere from $126,000 to $534,000 to open. They have about 40 locations throughout the United States. But one of the red flags with Tapioca Express, we saw their failure rates at 18% over the past three years that we have data for, where you compare that to other franchises at just 10%. So definitely talk to franchisees of Tapioca Express 
understand why the failure rate is, is a bit high and also see you know how the locations have been performing post pandemic the final concept i wanted to go through today is juice it up they have about 80 locations throughout the united states franchise fees are going to set you back seventeen thousand five hundred dollars anywhere from two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars to open up a juice it up the franchise for sale rate so people that are leaving looking to get out of a juice it up franchise was pretty high for the last three years that we have data for it was 22 percent that's pretty high that's nearly double the industry average you usually see 10 11 12 percent of people selling their franchise or being reacquired by the franchise or where juice it up was 22 percent over the last three years. And the failure rate wasn't so hot either at 18% for, for Juice It Up. And a franchise failure rate over a three year period usually hovers around 10%. The thing with Juice It Up, the franchisees, some are doing pretty well and I have averaging a volume at the Jamba averages um, even higher. And then you have the bottom 20% that's doing average unit volume at 250K. So the unit volumes all over the place that juice it up. I don't know if there's an issue of brand uniformity, if they let some franchisees in that shouldn't be in, or if it's very location dependent and they haven't been on the third party apps, but that's definitely something to consider that there's a pretty big variance in terms of how franchisees are doing, performing for Juice It Up that is a lot wider than we see for some other similar concepts. So the juice industry continues to grow throughout the United States and you have concepts that are offering juices, teas, and it's spilling over to smoothies. We'll do another episode just focused on smoothie franchises. So stay tuned for that.